So I've been mountain bike routinely for the past year and tracking my performance with the fitness watch. After each one of my rides, my watch syncs up with my phone and provides me with data through an application. However, the data provided is pretty useless for my current need. I want to use Python to get my data from the app and calculate what I really care about, which is how many jumps I hit a day. Oh yeah, cue the jumping montage. What up data nerds? I'm Luke, a data analyst, and my channel's all about tech and skills for data science. And in this video today, we're gonna to be using Python to go in and grab the data from my watch and go in and calculate how many jumps I hit per day. So why this attribute of jumps per day? I strongly feel that mountain biking has improved my mental health. And specifically, I feel like I'm my happiest whenever I'm hitting different jumps. So for that reason of how it impacts my happiness, I wanna start having a method of tracking how many jumps I'm hitting per day. So let's start getting into this project. And before we start coding with Python, let's understand what data is being stored and how we need to collect it. Every time I go biking, I record the start of every session on my Garmin watch. My watch records a plethora of information, including GPS location, heart rate, duration, and many other attributes. One note is that it doesn't record jumps per se, so we'll have to figure out how to calculate this uh, when we get to that point. When I'm done with my mountain bike session, I record this on the watch itself, and then from there, the data automatically uploads into my application of choice, which is Strava. This application was recommended to me by one of my subscribers, Dave, and he explained it to me that this app is basically the Facebook for outdoor enthusiasts. Within this application, it allows you to share all your data, such as location and duration, with all your closest friends. I was going through this application recently and found that the Strava application uses the GPS data to record what trails you have recently rode. And in my use case, this is basically the jackpot because now that I know what trails I've rode, I could then correlate the number of jumps for a given trail to calculate how many jumps I'm getting per day. Let's get into how we'll be using Python to collect and then manipulate the data. For those that don't know, Python is one of the most popular programming languages on the planet right now. And specifically in the realm of data science, it's really popular, especially in its capacity to do scientific and numeric computing. However, the main reason why I love Python is because it's a multi-use language. So I use it in data science, but it can also be used in web development, software development, and then also in the case that we're gonna use it for, which is scraping data. So back to Strava, 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 Strava. So back to Strava and how we're going to actually get our data with Python. There's a few ways that we can get our data from Strava, which is also very similar to other applications out there if you're encompassing a similar problem. The first option that you should always check is just, hey, can I download my data from the application to my computer locally? In this case with Strava, they did provide a way to download the data to my computer, but when I went through it, I found that the data that they provided didn't include the trail information. The next thing to look at is we could use Python itself to go and access the web page uh, from the front end and pull the data that we need by copying it, pasting it locally onto our computer. However, in this case, I'm not gonna recommend it because we're gonna have to cycle through many pages to get all that trail data and that is very taxing on the servers. We're gonna forego this and not gonna proceed with the web scraping. The last alternative is using an API which is an application programming interface, and luckily Strava has this. An API is basically a fancy way of saying we're gonna use code on our computer and we're going to send that code to the servers of the website of Strava and ask them for certain data, and then they will send that data back to us using this API in a common programming language. Truth be told, I'm not as familiar at using Python for accessing data through APIs, but luckily Coursera has a course titled Python for Everybody, and it's aimed at beginners and helps them learn how to code with everything you need to know for learning this language. The course includes a section on APIs themselves, and so I watched this section and it really got me up to speed really quick on what I needed to know to access these APIs with Python. If you're interested in this course, I have an affiliate link below that gives 25% uh, off for the next couple weeks. 
All right, so now that we have the background, let's jump into my computer and start coding. The first thing that we need to do is to set up the API through Strava, so that way Strava knows we're gonna be contacting it through Python, and also set up to allow access of my data to be given through this API. Now I've fired up a Jupyter Notebook and we can start coding in Python. We're not gonna go in extreme detail with the code, we're just gonna talk about the basic overviews of what's going on here. First, we specify the URLs or the websites that we want to go to to obtain our data. Next, we have in this payload parameter right here, we specify some of our token and secret identity to actually talk with the API itself. The next snippet, goes into requesting permission from Strava to get our data via an access token. And then this final portion actually goes in, communicates with the servers to request what activities I have performed. Okay, so let's go ahead and run this. So it's requesting, uh, it got our access token and now is requesting our activities. It can only download 200 activities at a time. So it's doing it via individual pages. And it looks like it completed the download. We have now downloaded 611 activities. So let's go ahead and look at the data that we downloaded. So from here, we can see it gives us information on who the athlete is, me, what we're done, distance, moving time, elapsed time, heart rate, if I have comments, if I have photos, my cadence, everything like that with the activities themselves, including the most important, which is we'll get to, which is the activity ID. So this was great. I was able to go in and use the API to contact Strava and get all of my different activities. The one problem is the list of activities here don't include any of the trail information which I need to calculate my jumps. So we're gonna have to go one more step further. So here we are in the Strava API documentation. And what I found was this, that you, we can request for each one of the activities using its ID, we can get more specific information from it. Specifically, we can get information on what they call the segment itself and this will include within the segment information all of the different trails that I wrote. So going back to the original data that we downloaded, we have the list of activities and the IDs for each of those. From there, we can go through some sort of for loop and request for each one of these activities to get all of the different trails for this. The one thing to note is that we downloaded 611 activities. So we're gonna have to get a lot of different activities uh, from this API itself. If we go to the Strava documentation, we can see that they limit us to rate limits of 100 requests every 15 minutes or 1,000 daily. So when we build this, we just have to be smart about not exceeding this rate limit. Okay, getting back into the Jupyter Notebook. So I was able to put this code together and this is how it goes. The first portion goes into calculating the time, how long it's gonna take based on that rate limit to collect the data that we need. From there, we go into using a for loop to actually iterate through our previously obtained data to cycle through and obtain each one of those activities. So let's go ahead and start pulling that data. Okay, and it looks like it's gonna take about 26 and a half minutes to obtain this data. And I was able to put this progress bar right underneath it to capture it as it goes. 20 minutes later. Okay, we're back and we have downloaded all of the activities. And so now let's go in and actually look at what we got. And so this is the similar data frame we had before and what I had the program do was then append for each one of these activities themselves, go in and append a list of the trails that I went on. So if we look at my most recent activity, we can see all of the different trails that I went on. And these are actually the trails that I went on this morning. I can now go in and put in how many jumps are associated for a given trail. A little longer than a few minutes later. So let's take a given example. And let's say the Jay-Z's Panther Prowl, which is actually Leopard's Loop. I know that there are seven jumps on this trail. So I went in to the CSV itself and put in that number of jumps and I went through and did all the top trails for this. 
Now that I have this trail jump data and the trails associated with each activity, I can then merge these two data sets, if you will, together and start calculating how many jumps I'm performing per day. So then we get this plot that looks at the past 30 days and looks at each one of these individual days to see how many jumps I'm doing per day. And some days there's nothing, like I know a couple of those were snow days, so I didn't get to ride my bike those days. But typically it looks like I'm getting around 75 to 100 jumps per day. Being the data nerd that I am, I wanna take this one step further and looking at it on a daily basis, it fluctuates a lot. I more care about getting the average number of jumps per day on a weekly basis and then comparing those weeks to each other over the past six months. So let's go ahead and do that. Now we have what I feel is sort of the final product. And this shows, hey, the last six months, what are the average jumps per day every week? And you see some gaps in here, like here in February, had some snow days. But just looking at recently, it looks like I'm averaging about 60 jumps per day. And then as of this week, I'm even at 80 jumps per day. Bam, so there you have it. I was able to go in and use Python to access the Strava API to get the data that I wanted, and then use my favorite library pandas to manipulate the data and provide insights on how many jumps I was performing per day. If you're interested to see the details of my code, I'll include a link below that has my GitHub repository. If you're new to Python and want to learn more, specifically the skills that I demonstrated in this video, I highly recommend that you check out Coursera's Python for Everybody course. This is great for those that have no background whatsoever in coding, want to learn more about Python. Also is good in my case, so that may be more experience, but needs to get a refresher on certain topics. The course itself is normally $50 per month, but I have a special promo code right now that gets you 25% off for the next two weeks. After that, it returns to the normal price of 50 US dollars. So as always, if you got value out of this video, smash that like button. And with that, I'll see you in the next one.